Welcome back to the Quiet On Set podcast powered by Cinnamon. I'm Ewan Gruff, and as always, I'm joined by Lachlan Teeley. The SAGI Awards happened. What awards? The SAG Awards. <laughs> the event that usually just reminds me that the Oscars are around the corner, and it's also the award ceremony that helps me guess who's going to win the Oscar. It's like the pre-Oscars, but with less wives in your mouth. So that's, you know, great, <laughs> excellent. That's great. Uh, I played uh, The Last of Us prequel DLC left behind in the lead up to that uh, flashback episode that maybe we'll actually get to talk about uh, in a bit in what we've been watching. And Lachlan kind of misunderstood me when I said, yeah, you got to watch the entire Rocky franchise because he went ahead and watched the entire Rocky franchise in preparation for, well, our main I'm dedicated. today. What can I say? Is... There's got to yes. be somebody in this podcast who is the dedicated one who will watch every single just don't ask me when the new mcu movie comes out because i'm not doing that anyways luckland what are we talking about today well we're talking about creed 3 that just released yeah. and that's obviously why i watched all the rocky movies this week you and i both caught up with it we're going to share our thoughts on it the very anime inspired apparently creed mm. 3 also the directorial debut of Michael B. Jordan. Exactly. So let's cue up the intro and get into the show. We are it professionals. Is, this, is, this is a professional podcast. Yes. Breaking that and better for song. Hello there. <laughs> Which actually did you this get is me a hat a as bit... well? Um. Yes. So I've got Dune Cam. <laughs> it's just a camera <laughs> with my Dune Steelbook. Welcome back, Lachlan. I'm really keen uh, for today's conversation filled with a lot of boxing yeah glad to get back on to uh the rocky train um but before we do that uh i guess check the description or link below you get all the time codes for all the stuff we'll be talking about today but it shouldn't take too long until we get to that uh discussion about creed free and that whole franchise um because well, the news, I think, is kind of light this week. Uh, there wasn't Very much. Not a lot. Other than the saggy sag awards that happened. Um, I watched it live. I did another live stream just uh, watching along with it because they were streaming it on YouTube. And then after, I think they like completely blocked my video for a bit and then it just released again. It was really odd. Uh, but, um, it, I mean, it was fun. It was uh, a lot of actors just kind of uh, self-congratulating in a sense, but um, had a bunch of great speeches. And the most relevant thing about it was that everything, everywhere, all at once swept uh, yep. out of the five big categories or the five big movie categories other than stunt that you can even win at uh, the SAG Awards. <laughs> everything, everywhere took supporting actress for Jamie Lee Curtis. It took supporting actor for Kate Yu Kwan and lead actress for Michelle Yeoh as well as Best Ensemble. So it literally won everything oh. that it could have. Uh, so impressive. I feel like at this point, it's re it really is the front runner, and it's making a lot of the Oscar races quite interesting and competitive as well. And another surprise win was Brendan Fraser as a Best Lead uh, over Austin Butler and Colin Farrell. So uh, yeah, that Oscar race. That, did that change up your Oscar predictions, Lachlan? I wouldn't say it changed it too much because for me, a lot of the categories that everything, everywhere, all at once is nominated in, I've selected them because I, I want them mm. to be the sweeping film this year. I think they're excellent, especially over Elvis. Uh, there's a couple yeah. of the, like, I mean, I don't know if I would give Jamie Lee Curtis a uh, female actor in a, a supporting role. Over, yeah. over Angela Bassett because I thought that her performance was probably the best part of Wakanda Forever and was mm -hmm. probably the only standout performance. Well, I wouldn't even actually, I won't say that because I think that both Kerry Connan and um, Hong Chao were excellent in both uh, The Whale and Banshees of Inner Sheeran, but there was just something yeah. about uh, Bassett's performance in Wakanda that I quite liked. But other than that, I, I have mm -hmm. no quarrels with them sweeping the SAG Awards and I hope to see it in two weeks time when the Oscars happen. Exactly on March 12th so not too far away until March 11th you actually do have time to fill out that quiet and said Oscar prediction sheet and win a year of Letterbox Pro. We are can about I win to the year? make... Can you pay for my you, year? Can yes, I win? I, you could. That's not fair. I watch That's this. not it's fair. It's not going to happen. It's, it's so oh, not okay. going to happen. I, I'm not concerned at all. We are usually the ones who do the worst by far at these. Yeah. So <laughs> if there's someone who fills it out, they will probably beat us both up. 
Um, cool. I didn't take too many big swings this year because unfortunately we won't be able to watch it together for you. It's like really in the morning you're at work. So unfortunately it will just be me again watching that and I'll uh, make a fun little drinking game out of it. I was thinking because you can't be there, I might even, you know, whenever you get something wrong, I'll also drink. But then I thought maybe that's too much. We'll see. Maybe I'll do and that. And I'm just going to select well the worst predictions ever. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. That. Thank you for you're just gonna letting sabotage me know that. Me. Oh, no. Well, we'll do our final predictions in a separate video. We can link to that uh, here and then also probably in the description below. So go check that out if you're interested. In other news, uh, still Oscar adjacent, the documentary nominee Fire of Love is apparently getting a live action film treatment. Uh, Lachlan, what do you think about this? Because you really loved that film, right? I really did. Uh, it's currently the only documentary film film that i've seen in that category uh yeah for best uh documentary uh so it's quite good in my opinion uh out of all of them because <laughs> it's the only one i've seen it's such a sad story that mm -hmm. it's interesting to see that that is getting converted into a feature film so i'd love to see it i hope it's quite gritty and raw and you know it adds some this you know powerful volcano scenes like i want to see some pompeii level shit going down but no yeah i'm, I'm quite excited i'm hopefully it's not going to be shit <laughs> which i, I mean, have to kind of say yeah, you never know and uh, i mean a couple of years ago they did announce as soon as parasite or like right before parasite one they were like hey we're doing an american adaptation of it i think uh, like a mini series or whatever yeah uh and that hasn't happened yet i don't know maybe they were like <laughs> they all got COVID and got some sense that, like knocked back into them uh, but we'll see. I think it's the only dark film where it kind of makes the most sense. Navalny might be another one where it's like a spy thriller-esque thing, but you already got the best moments captured in documentary form. I think mm. it would lessen it if you dramatize certain aspects of it. It's so great because it actually is like just document documented in that. Yeah. Uh, I feel like that's probably the front run at this point, just because it's so timely. Fire of Love, probably the best out of the, the whole category. With this being the last week of, well, before the Oscars uh, yeah, coming out literally and finally announced, week, yeah. um, mm -hmm. documentary short and documentary feature are two of the only films, oh, oh I'm sorry, international feature film uh, mm -hmm. categories that I haven't seen yet. So that's this week. That's what I'm watching uh, to yeah. finally lock in uh, all of my uh proper predictions uh but yeah uh for for an adaptation to be announced uh for from a documentary that's i guess not that common i don't can't really remember the last time i thought of a, yeah, me a feature neither. film based off of a documentary yeah i can't think of yeah. anything off the top of my head probably something that happens less it's more that we get book adaptations something like that but uh if there's a real life story then there's not a doc about it then it's just like based on true events i guess that type of um, stuff but I, I wonder if they also because the film isn't like shot with like new material it's just what those two shot and then what do you do that was the charm about it their own storytelling but how do you tell the story from someone else and it becomes just about these two people but I think what they were capturing is so much about like who these two were so I don't know we'll, we'll have to wait and see uh, if this comes to fruition and uh, if it's any good. I quickly had a good Google and yeah. I just remember that, yeah, Rescue Dawn was one where Herzog ah, yeah. did a, um, a True, yeah, that's... documentary on uh, that guy. But he also did the oh. documentary, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then the film. <laughs> yeah. Both of them are, are like quite interesting. I, I like the documentary a bit more. Little Dita hmm? Needs a Fly. Yeah, he did the... He did the... Yeah. Doctor. Yeah, he did both. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's an interesting one because there's, I've, I've, there's a couple here that I was like, oh, that's interesting. Like, um, uh, Welcome to Marwin. That's another one with uh Steve Carell, based on a documentary that came out. Isn't previously. that like tiny, tiny porcelain creatures? Whatever. Yeah, that's like him. How is and that then, based on on yeah. real life? Uh, because there was a documentary based on one sec. Uh, it's based on the documentary Marwin Cole that explores the engrossing life of artist Mark Hogan Camp in 2018 drama Welcome to Marvin. Steve Carell. No, wait, no. Based on the documentary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mark Cole is a documentary from 2010 that around oh, his life, okay. and then 2018 came along the movie. Sorry, I read that completely wrong. Yeah, so it's right. based on a documentary. Well, I mean, there's some potential there, but uh, people are already familiar with the story, and uh, I don't know. I don't know what to think about this, but uh, I mean, it has the potential to be great because it's volcanoes and volcanoes can be pretty exciting. Um, volcanoes so are pretty. Fire of love. There's a lack of, 
volcano films, uh, in a sense. So, same with like next week's release, uh, 65, with dinosaur films outside of the Jurassic Park series. Not a lot of those happening. Um, so I'd, I'd love to see like these interesting settings and um, I don't know what, what dinosaurs would be because it's not a setting. Uh, but, but yeah, those utilized more in film. Anyways, Lachlan, uh, again, like I said, quick news segment this week. Not short, a lot to sweet. talk about. Short and sweet. Let's get to what we've been watching, which uh, will probably not be short and sweet. How about you go first this time? Because I've got more than you. Let's let's talk about uh, The Last of Us then at first, because we both share that. Uh, I, I played the, the DLC um, right before I uh, went to go uh, watch episode 7, which is a flashback episode in the series. So I guess spoilers up until episode 7. Uh, episode 8 is premiering later tonight, and then next week we get the finale. Lachlan, what, do you, what did you make of... Um, those last two episodes, Kin and Because, yeah, I actually skipped uh, last week. I didn't have enough time to sit down and watch it, I'm afraid. But I caught up mm -hmm. with uh, the previous week. So I did a double double screening of The Last of Us this week. So double whammied it. So both mm -hmm. episode Kin and Left Behind I thought were, were excellent. Uh, and I do adore that little DLC because it was sweet, short, and it added quite a lot to Ellie's character. Mm -hmm. I don't think the episode has the same effect that the game did, uh, but I yeah. still thought I, I do like these episodes that kind of go away for a little bit, similar to uh, Long, Long Time, the third episode with uh, Bill and Frank. Uh, this mm. is a good episode where it doesn't focus too much on the greater story and just goes into depth with character that we're coming to know and fall in love with and so on so on i mean I, I i also played the dlc um and it's the difference there is that uh you know you go back and forth from the memories to i guess just trying to find uh, medicine for joel and yeah. being jolted around that way where you like you are in a fantasy until that's not a fantasy anymore the other thing is just like bleak reality it's really dark and you're being hunted and you gotta fight i thought like the contrast there uh, until they kind of converge and it all just kind of sucks is great i feel like that works really well in that dlc because i didn't want to do all of the scenes where I had to sneak around and get stuff. I just wanted to go back to Riley and have them have a, a share a moment. Uh, so to be that emotionally engaged, I think they couldn't completely do that for me with the TV episode. So I kind of agree. I, I like the DLC playing it a bit more. Uh, although there, there was like a mission towards the end where you got to escape. And there's just so many enemies. Um, and I only had like a bow and arrow, uh, so I had to get good with that. And I'm a sh I'm, I'm shit. I'm so shit at gaming. <laughs> so <laughs> that was a bit hard. It's true. Uh, but but I, I feel like they end both things um, in a great way. I, I like the ending in the game a bit more, but uh, yeah, uh, it, it's great because you have like two great performers uh, in it as well in the series. I think both of those actresses. Uh, yeah, Bella have, Ramsey have and Storm Reid did a great yeah. job with Ellie and Riley. Mm -hmm. For me, the episode has that looming doom feeling because I knew how yeah. it was going to end and anyone who's played the game knows how it's going to end. And I think the episode plays that in their favor, which is mm -hmm. quite a good thing because there's no way they can, they can hide this part of the story as it's so impactful and it's been building and we know that they haven't really changed it from the game with the way that Ellie has spoken about her getting infected with both Tess and Joel, she's quite standoffish. Mm. So we kind of just assume that they're going to follow the same storyline and Riley ends up dying. Uh, yeah. Well, also bit as well, and she's not immune. Yeah, exactly. The... And off screen as well, you know, the implications of um, what what Ellie has to do and that, uh, you know, it's it's like, the the options that Riley spills out right before they just sit there and um just accept it uh like the contrast of that later on where she keeps fighting and she keeps going for Joel she's like not letting him go uh I feel like that's kind of beautiful like the way that it contrasts it's like it does that a lot in the story where it's uh you have these like basically two options and uh where the past shapes how you behave in the present um, and I feel like they, they do the screenwriting, the adaptation. I'd like it's already all there in the game. 
and um, they give it its unique twist uh, that still kind of feels true to the source material. I feel like they've been doing a great job adapting this. And it, it could yeah. have totally been like so much worse. So I'm really happy. It's, it's only just because there's not really a lot of games out there that have been adapted that were so movie and story driven than mm -hmm. The Last of Us. Uh, Last of yeah. Us has obviously got some of the best cinematics from a narrative story telling, uh, like story point, mm -hmm. um, storytelling point, I should say, mm -hmm. that it's easy to adapt this. They're not straying far from the narrative. They're adding depth where they need to add depth. They're doing subtle changes where they need to do subtle changes. Uh, but overall, it's pretty much a copy and paste of the main beats and then how they get to those beats are slightly different. Uh, yeah. With the next episode, and there's obviously, what, two episodes left? Obviously, we can assume that episode eight is just going to be, without I spoiling guess, like, it, spoilers, uh, yeah. without spoiling it, you know, a very mm. uh, Ellie-focused episode once again, um, with mm. Joel coming in in the latter half. And then I hope that episode yeah. nine is a longer one because... <laughs> That is yeah. probably one of the more important moments of the story as a whole for both episode one and two. Uh, sorry, uh, game one and two, I should say. So I'm hoping that episode nine, the season finale, is a nice long episode, similar to the opening, um, yeah. where it's nice and long and you get quite a mm. lot out of it. There's a lot they have to do in two episodes, a lot. So mm. I either they're cutting something down, they're cutting certain parts out. There's a certain part in... Uh, the Last of Us, which is my favorite part, which happens just before they reach the fireflies uh, regarding a certain animal, uh, mm. and I hope they keep, leave that in the in the TV show. But hey, and they can slow down as well. Yeah, you yeah. need to slow down in that moment. Um, so I I hope they I, I feel like they definitely will get that. It will definitely see that that will not be something that's skipped because I feel like it's integral to the story. Yeah, uh, it, but it's hard to to do because it's so much. It's easier because you walk through, um, and you can't really do that with with uh, the game. And they've been they haven't really skipped uh, that much. They've just kind of adjusted and all of the survival gameplay when you when you're going from point A to point B. Uh, that is kind of, I guess, the most of what's been cut because there the, was just so many less like zombies and enemies to to go through. I, I'm keen. Uh, I think we'll do a probably a series one review once it has wrapped, uh, doing some of the comparisons from the, the series to game and stuff like that from an expert who's played it countless times. But yeah, uh, so that's... <laughs> It's a little deep dive on the last two episodes of The, the Last of Us. Uh, I also uh, finished an, an anime that I... I don't know what it was, uh, but I added so many animes to my watch list uh, last week. Maybe it is that Michael B. Jordan Creed uh, free inspired stuff was like, I got to watch some Shogun. Uh, I think that's what it's called. <laughs> like, I got to watch some of those like classic animes that everyone's raving about. It's, it just takes so much time. Some of them... Uh, <laughs> There's just so many episodes, but I did finish one of them, not a, a shogun or whatever, called it's more of like a, a drama one. Welcome to the NHK uh, about a guy in his mid-20s who has like a condition where he uh, cannot leave the house or he's really afraid to. Then it's about him, I guess, overcoming that fear with uh, a neighbor, uh, with two neighbors. He starts to make like a, a <laughs> erotic dating game where they kind of plan that out. It's a really horny show, like a lot of, uh, I guess, anime is in a really awkward sense. I guess you just got to get kind of used to it. I, I don't think I will ever get really that used to uh, some of the weirdness in anime. That's just kind of consistent, and I don't really get why it's so consistent. Uh, regardless, uh, it, it's a great show. It, like, tackles depression, um, suicide even. Like, it's a really heavy show in parts, uh, and it nails some of the aspects. Uh, it, it kind of feels similar to it, where it's, like, uh, I think a 24-episode season run uh, with some of my other favorite uh, animes. Like, I'm so, so, so basic with this, but, like, a Death Note. I feel like the latter half isn't as strong as the first half. It's kind of similar with this one, although it doesn't have like that big moment like uh, I guess um, Death Note has. But uh, yeah, I think uh, not really an anime that a lot of people know about. At least like I've never heard it. I just kind of randomly um, picked it up because I like the one of the songs that they use. I use it like as an outro song. 
uh for the live streams um but that's that i can recommend it it's fun uh then i watched joyland uh a film i think that's about to release it's all over the place like it already has released in some places it's um i think it was a pakistani submission for the oscars this year doesn't didn't get in maybe i'll just read the synopsis because it's a really good one as a patriarchal family yearn for the birth of a baby boy to continue their family line the youngest son secretly joins an erotic dance theater and falls for a transgender starlet uh so that's that story it's a really intimate one um where you get to follow along this guy who i i guess is kind of timid uh but is you know kind of um given the task of hey create a baby boy and it's not just uh, about his journey but uh the uh dancers ones and his wife that he has uh so it's it's like a a, a really solid like type of um film that you see at festivals a lot so i can re recommend that one and then uh the uh feature film adaptation of a short from 2021 bruiser is now streaming on hulu and on um i guess internationally on disney plus uh starring uh Cervante rhodes and and what's his name uh and uh, uh shamir anderson which uh he we will see him in uh john wick 4 by the way still can't talk about it but he is in that film that's not breaking my embargo but that's like a really captivating story about uh a young guy coming back and then having to grasp with his own identity and his um parents you know multiples there uh really solid uh little short if you haven't seen it already i think that's also just uh, available on the internet and uh, has some stunning performances i really enjoyed it gave it a four out of five that's really high for me I had a great time with it, so go give that a try if you want to. All right, Lachlan, I don't want to take any more time of those. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. I'm looking at you, what we've been watching, and it's so much more than me. So I'll just hand yep. it off to you. All right. So other than the first two episodes of The Last of Us, I caught up with Scream. Which one do you think it is, Ewan? I don't think you watched any of the original ones. I still think, because you said rewatched, you didn't watch four, which would be kind of nice to do before... Scream 6, um, again, embargo, but would be kind of relevant, maybe. Uh, all of them are, by the way. Uh, Am I going to have to rewatch all of the Screams? Oh, great. No, 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 no. No, it's, no, it's no, no, like, no, 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 I've got to do it this week, Not spoiling anything, man. but like there's a trailer shot week. with a lot of them. I'm going to do it this week. All right. I, I didn't do it. I just watched, I watched the. Three and four. I watched the I one five. from last year. Scream. You watched Scream. <laughs> you watched I watched Scream. Scream. You know. I, I said I watched Scream. <laughs> I was just asking you, and I didn't realize you were going to go on a right. tangent on which Scream. I'm it sorry. Was. I thought I, I, I could just have just thrown you with you Scream the One or Scream Five since they're named the same. Anyway, I watched every single Rocky film. Oh my god. Every single yes. one. You know how? Wait, do you even watch Balboa? We were, Rocky Balboa. Yeah. You know how yesterday I told you? Oh my god. That yeah, yeah. I squeezed. So when I left the screening of, so we record these at like 5 p.m. When I was leaving the screening of Creed 3 today, when I got home, yeah. there was about an hour and 15, uh, hour and 45 minutes, sorry, before this recording was to take place. That film was yeah. an hour and 45 minutes long, so I squeezed it in just before <laughs> we started the recording. Oh my God. So wow, okay. that means really I had impressive. watched Rocky, Rocky 2, Rocky 3, Rocky 4, Rocky 5, Rocky Balboa, Creed 1, and Creed 2. I finished Creed 2 with my AirPods in just before Creed 3 started. So I had a binge <laughs> of oh the entire God. Rocky series oh this week. And there is no other word Jesus. that I can use to describe Rocky series, Creed and all, other than Rocky, because it is highs and it is lows. Yeah. I think we're going to be doing a Creed and rocky bracket yeah 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 separately mm -hmm. or like mm -hmm. separate brackets or well no 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 they're all in the same bracket one of okay, them gets cool. shoehorned in and then we got eight films that battle it out surprisingly creed 3 i think is at the moment uh, or at like the moment that i did the seeding for the bracket the second highest rated of the whole franchise Creed uh, 3? Which was a bit surprising yeah it's a bit surprising to me but i guess it's funny early, story is that's like my second lowest one <laughs> <laughs> already spoiling it here uh, to me, to me, um, oh, we'll get to it in a second but um but yeah but yeah anyway uh, anyway out of the creed uh, films uh, probably also my my least favorite uh but we'll, we're we'll it. it's not a bad film <laughs> oh, you're getting ahead of film. ourselves it's just not great uh but like yeah i've never been a guy for boxing movies and i've just never really had a reason to watch them i think i i watched raging bull maybe like four or five years ago 
And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, this is the boxing movies are great. I think I might have to go on a boxing movie deep dive. Like I'm talking <laughs> Southpaw. Southpaw. Talking, uh, yeah. Is it the brothers? The brothers? No, uh, it's not the, the brothers. brothers. I don't uh, know. The fighter. The fighter. That's one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, warrior. Uh, no. But it's more like not just boxing. There's a lot of Rocky movies. Um, you're gonna you're gonna get past all the. Rocky I typed movies in first. I typed in boxing film and the first one that came up was Father uh, Million Stew. Million Dollar Baby. <laughs> uh, the Fighter is what I was thinking of. Um, the bomb. Ali, you know, there's a lot of boxing movies out there, and I might have to do Real a little bit steel. of a deep dive. Uh, the Hurricane, <laughs> I would love to watch that. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of uh, a lot of movies here that are boxing based, and I might have to mm -hmm. finally give them a watch because. You know, I'm currently really into boxing movies since it's the only thing I've watched this week. Uh, but yes, <laughs> they have their highlights. They have their lowlights. Sylvester Stallone, obviously the writer and director uh, for some of most of them. Mm -hmm. well, like three, losing, losing the rights to Rocky as well, I recently discovered. Uh, but yeah. I feel like there is just something about boxing movies, which we'll get into with Creed. Uh, where it's the it's the personal aspect that is really the the most important part. The it's not about mm. the actual fights themselves. It's about the outside stuff, and some of the outside stuff can just not be great at all. Which I'm not going to spoil anything, but where Rocky Five goes is just it's not it's not a Rocky <laughs> movie to me. It's it's just no. street brawling at one point, and I can and it was good to watch it because. I mean, I I don't think I would have had to watch these films to watch Creed three today. I think Creed three is mm -hmm. the most distant from the entire series, uh, and we we'll yeah. get to that shortly. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, there are some aspects to Creed three that they throw back to, obviously, to the original series and obviously the first two Creed films that are very very nice to see. And I wouldn't mm. have caught them if I hadn't literally binged every single Rocky movie and Creed movie this week. So, yeah, yeah. Creed, uh, Rocky movies and Creed movies, great. You should sit mm. down and watch all of them. <laughs> Force yourself. Yeah, yeah, in one go. Don't One yeah, big go. I think at one point you said, like, <laughs> jokingly, you said, yeah, you have, like, a, a timer. Each hour it reminds you, go watch 10 minutes of... of <laughs> and you I was just joking don't about sleep that. Anymore. I was joking about. Yeah. I literally sat there and That's watched funny. them. I told I told you and that I I told you and uh, <laughs> that I was watching them ten minutes at a time for like an hour period. So I had like six yeah. films that I could watch in one hour period, but I'd watch ten minutes at a time, and I'd be watching that, and then I'd go back to whatever I was doing. It's you, you yeah. told me that right before I think I I went to bed, and I <laughs> kid you not, I had a dream about like in my head I would like. And I just pictured you like with an alarm getting up like a drone, watching 10 minutes, going back to sleep and then like over and over again in the style of a Rocky montage, like uh, just like selling stuff at work or like doing your work stuff and just on, on the background, it's just, just like on a TV it. somewhere, like, it's just like watching Rocky. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's get to uh, Creed. Free. After dominating the boxing world, Adonis Creed has been thriving in both his career and family life. When a childhood friend and former boxing prodigy, Damien Anderson, resurfaces after serving a long sentence in prison, he is eager to prove that he deserves his shot in the ring. The face-off between former friends is more than just a fight. To settle the score, Adonis must put his future on the line to battle Damien, a fighter who has nothing to lose. That is Creed Free, the directorial debut from michael b jordan uh it comes in at a runtime of 116 minutes and has been so far received very positively with a 3.8 on letterbox a 7.4 on imdb and a 74 on metacritic as well uh it comes in with the highest budget of the series so far 75 million dollars uh so crazy to see uh someone like michael b jordan do their debut and have a lot on his shoulders as well, you know, to carry, to have that huge a budget. The original Rocky movie, which went on to win, like, I think Best Picture as well, uh, or at least was a nominee, is like one that was made in a really uh, run and gun type of style for a million dollars. Uh, to, so you kind of see the, prog like, I, I think even the last uh, Creed film was done for under 50 million. Um, but it's had the best opening so far of all of the, the Creed films. 
Um, so it will probably end up um, making its money back. Uh, so far, the reception has been really positive. We will overall, I think, I guess, spoilers for all of the Rocky films and the Creed films. <laughs> there will be a lot of homework if you don't want to be spoiled for anything. <laughs> uh, in this, <laughs> you got to do the same thing that Lachlan did to catch up with all of them. Um, but overall, just a spoiler warning for this review, we'll, we'll get into the specifics of the fight. But if you watch the trailer, you've already been so spoiled because what happens in the trailer is like the last third of the film. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's more about the, the journey, not the destination. Uh, Lachlan, what did you make of Creed 3? After coming hot off all of these Rocky films, what did you make of it? It wasn't my favorite Creed film. I will say that first and foremost. Right. I still think yeah. Creed was and still is the best one of the trilogy so far. But I feel yep. like Creed 2 fell off a little bit with its focus. Uh, mm -hmm. Creed 3 sits in the middle of the pack. Uh, I could definitely see it being better than the original Creed, but I don't know what it is. Mm. I think there's just something about the original Creed that just was exciting and had that core Rocky heart to it. But the exciting yeah. part about this film is that it, it kind of separates itself from Rocky. And that can be exciting for one, because you want to separate yourself from Rocky Balboa. You want to separate and make Adonis Creed the championship mm. fighter. You want to make him the name that everyone listens to and, and says and at this, you know, this era of boxing movies. But at the yeah. same time, that's the founding movies. There wouldn't be Creed movies without the Rocky movie. So it's kind of interesting that it separates yeah. itself away from Rocky. And that's a mixture of both. No. Well, it's not even a mixture of both. It's really just all offline feuds with um the producing. Evan Winkler, that little yes. flea bag of a person. Um, Apparently, yeah, he sold, uh, well, Stallone sold the rights to Winkler right after the, the first film came out to make yeah. some money. And if you know the backstory to Rocky, it's also that like, he wrote it, and then they were like, yeah, great, we'll buy it off for, um, from you for whatever. I don't know how much money it was. Uh, I think a pretty like fair amount. Uh, definitely like close to 100000 if I got that right, if I remember correctly. And uh, he said, no, I'm, I, I want to star in it. <laughs> and uh, he did, uh, but he did sell off a bunch of the rights. And then he, he was mainly a writer for a lot of these I think he directed. Uh, he directed. Uh, directed two, Rocky Balboa, three, and two, four, and and he also yeah. did uh, Balboa in two thousand and six. Yeah, he he had some up and down swings with for for some of them uh, as well uh, when it comes to quality. But um, he's just I guess not been treated as he he wanted to or not gotten uh, out of like the series that he spawned what what he thinks he deserves and what he probably also will deserve. I'm definitely going to side with the actor over the, like, 94-year-old producer in this. <laughs> and unfortunately, it's also already, like, when when you look at the producer list, it's his two sons uh, from Winkler that uh, are already, like, set up to to continue uh, this, which is sad to see. I'd love to see some uh, more love for what Stallone has done for the series. And unfortunately, that means that, um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, bad blood uh, in, behind the scenes and we don't get any of Rocky in this and, and there were like one or two moments where he definitely was really missing um, in the story where he should have been there just like kind of on the sidelines and I think he, he doesn't take away anything from Creed at this stage they, they do a bigger time jump as well when we yeah. go from Creed 2 to Creed 3 there's about five years that, ha that happen like chronically I guess for us uh, uh, from 2018 to 2023 in story time, I think it's about like 10 years that pass. What do you make about like those type of um, challenges that come with that? Like the, the father story type yeah. of beats? It was kind of interesting because uh, I feel like the father story aspect is Creed 2 because there's the reconnection yeah. with uh, Rocky and his son. There's obviously mm -hmm. the um, Drago boys, uh, father and son, very rough tough relationship and then there's obviously Adonis Creed and his you know coming child uh so it's how are you going to become a father and you know mm. we've passed that storyline we're here now I didn't feel like well 
I didn't feel like Rocky was missing because, as I said, they want to establish Creed his own feat. Uh, they want him mm. to be his own character. And it's a bit yeah. unfortunate to not have Rocky because I thought maybe Rocky would come at the end. I wasn't aware of the situation until I got out of the cinema because it literally was the first thing that I Googled was why is there no Stallone in this? Even though I believe he yeah. does have a producing credit, there's no Stallone mm. physically in the film. And then obviously mm. I learned about the whole situation behind the scenes. The yeah. the film itself, it's obviously, it's it's focus is not so much a personal family focus, which has always seemed to be the the Rocky thing. There's always this something happening between Rocky or Adrian. Or Adrian doesn't want him to fight or it's, you know, the particular neighborhood he's grown up in or, you know, he's not man enough to fight. Like, you know, when um, Mr. T in three is just like <laughs> throwing down his retirement. And, you know, it, it's mm -hmm. about like a, a physical mental thing where, it doesn't really have that. It's a whole different can of beans, Creed 3. Mm. They go into a storyline that's way darker than any other film in the Rocky history because it's tackling some pretty dark subject matter of, you know, imprisonment and running away from the police and sort of not as yeah. hard as some other films have done it. You know, this is not do the right thing or anything like that. This is, uh, yeah. after all, a boxing movie, but it's definitely one of the darker moments in the Creed storyline, and I will say as well the Rocky storyline, even though I feel like a lot of the Rocky films have a quite, I guess, they haven't aged as well for the, the, the campiness of some of the, the, yeah, yeah, the, the, very some of the moments. Uh, yeah. But Creed Three goes down this interesting path of uh, childish behavior and hooliganness, I guess, is the easiest way of placing it. I don't really know how to describe yeah. the, where they go with this film uh, story-wise because it's yeah. not like they're trying to say a message about anything in particular. It's just that he was in prison and he forgot about him. Where they definitely, There's definitely yeah. a different screenplay where it's a lot uh, more into one specific topic of conversation I, I just if i'm being totally honest i wish they would have sidelined sidelined his daughter and just focus more on the damien adonis relationship yeah. because that to me was incredibly underwritten i i had like quite if i have quite a few qualms with um with the screenplay here when i watched it uh, i didn't rewatch creed one and two before i went to see creed three and i was like yeah no that was that was great fun a lot of interesting sequences and whatever and then I went back to watch the first two Creed films and I was like, holy shit, the writing is so much, like, especially in the first one, the, the writing and the performances is amazing. And here yeah. I, I felt that as well, where uh, Adonis is just like a shell of a human person that is just kind of, that there's nothing going on with him other than he is like, ooh, don't, don't try to uh, aggravate me, I'll like, get aggro. And it's all there is to it. The, the yeah. relationship between him, him and him and Bianca was like there was there was nothing to grasp onto. She just does the same thing over and over again. D, you got to talk to me, and nothing happens there. Uh, they they don't resolve anything. That relationship feels kind of toxic, but not in an interesting way where like it depicts the toxicity. But it's actually by the end of it because oh, you got to fight that son of a bitch. Like in in the trailer, uh, it's. It's like ultimately rings really hollow. And I was, apart from the fight scenes, quite underwhelmed with like this third installment, which, you know, doesn't matter because the fights are really unique. Uh, no, they got like the Sherlock Holmes slow dance You are wrong. You are wrong. I'm wrong. Okay. Because well, tell me. at the heart of every Rocky film, it does not matter about the fights because the fights right. matter, but they don't matter as much as the emotional connection between the characters outside of the ring. That has been. I think they do matter more now the with the best Creed films, thing, But that's why this Creed film doesn't land as well. That's why the fight scenes are great, and we can say that, and we're going to get to that in a second. But this yeah. film lacks the emotional attachment that each character has in other films. Like you can feel mm. Rocky, his love for Adrian and uh, Paulie and. And Mickey, you can feel that in the Rocky films. In Creed mm. 1, you can see that there is this connection between uh, Bianca and Adonis. And in 
the second one, you can, even though it's obviously, you know, a big rematch of the century, there is this interesting relationship between Aldonis and Victor uh, Drago because, mm-hmm. you know, his father hurt his father and it's kind of like the Battle of the Sons um, rematch. And th- But that connection is super interesting. But they don't have that similar... They should have a similar connection with Damien and Ardonis in this fight, but there, is, mm-hmm. there isn't really they that. They just There's cut just... back to the same flashback over yeah. and over and over again. And ultimately, I thought that like there was something more dramatic coming, but it was just like teasing us, cutting off like earlier and then showing a bit more each time. Um, and to me, that just wasn't strong directing choices in uh, like adapting, I guess, whatever was on the page. Uh, to screen there, and um, he focused on the action. Maybe it would have made more sense that he focuses like on some parts, and then someone else helps him out with more of the screenplay things. It just mm. it it just really didn't work for me in in um in a lot of lot of moments. What do you think about the kid? Uh, setting it up as like legacy. She's oh, she's a fighter as well. She's like they did that in the second one already, where she like was it's so dumb. She was like screaming and yeah. wouldn't fall asleep. And then when they go to the yeah, she's when they go to the gym, she would be she 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 would be like calm down and be quiet. And I guess like they they're setting up the third generation here. I kind of felt that with every scene. It's like oh okay, they're setting her up to be like a fighter. Cool. <laughs> This is all just like the purpose of that. It's not like in service of story or character. I didn't think it was setting up anything, if I'm totally honest. I just thought that, right. you know, it's interesting that this young girl is fighting. Um, I lost all interest in her when the storyline of her trying to, or at least the parents trying to teach her emotional connections and sort of violent outbursts just never went anywhere. And I was like, there is no continuing of this storyline by the time we got to the last fight. And I thought, okay, it's actually in one of my notes. I yeah. wrote down, so I wrote, uh, where am I? Where am I? Cause I, I get, I get quite positive with it. It goes, mm-hmm. uh, cause it's the whole montage scene. Uh, cause at the end they do that. Yeah. They do the conversation on the TV. And I was like, <laughs> I really enjoyed Jonathan Majors. I wrote it twice. I was like, Jonathan Majors is good. And then I wrote Jonathan Majors yeah. is good with like a bunch of O's. Uh, Drogo coming mm-hmm. back is great. Uh, running up to the Hollywood sign is like running up to the steps in this generation. And I said that for the first time ever, it feels like an even fight. So obviously the Drago, him fight, he's much, Drago is much bigger. And then it's kind of like the same in like the first round. Like there was a clear like one winner in one round, one winner in the other round where the final fight mm-hmm. of this film feels quite balanced. Like both of them are hitting even punches and like one person is coming out on top. Um, yeah. Great sound with the fight, great visuals, yada, yada, yada. And then I, and then I wrote, where has all the storylines gone that we're setting up? I've just realized there's no storyline regarding the daughter's violent outbursts at school. That's something for Creed 4. No, the, the way that they leave off the story, it did, not to jump to, I guess, directly to the end, but the way that they ended, I feel like it would be a nice end to the story, which obviously will be continued as long as the, the wrinklers have a uh, say about it, uh, for sure. Um, but yeah, it, it ends in, in a like kind of contemplative, nice, mm. nice touching way. Regardless, I think let's talk about Jonathan Majors. Definitely the standout performance in here. He got yoked uh, with a capital uh, J. <laughs> Uh, for this incredibly uh, stunning physique in this. Um, I mean, he did this for this, but he also had a um, Sundance film um, It's called Magazine Dreams that will come out later this year, uh, where we'll talk about him some more when it comes to great performances. But even here, I feel like he is the best part uh, about the film, even though his character, um, I don't know, I didn't have that big an issue with his character's writing. It just... There wasn't enough beats and plot points that he could... He, he seemed like a really thin character other than like he was a boxer, then he did this one thing. And I thought like he killed someone or something like that, that he yeah. uh, got into prison. But it was just like he had a gun and for that he was like locked away for for um, like over a decade. Uh, or like 18 years or what it was. So, but yeah, he he brings a lot of depth to that performance because... When you look at his face, there's all there's 
always a multitude of emotions where Adonis Creed, I think, Michael B. Jordan plays him. In the first two, I felt like there, there was a bit more going on. And here it feels like a bit more one note where it's like he's a father and he wants to defend his honor or he's like he, he wants to be a good friend. So he's way more simple as a character because to the outside, he wants to be and also portray this person who is like, you know, has made it and is now coaching others. So he's not the center of the drama anymore. And um, when he becomes that, uh, then um, I guess there's just a bunch of like violent outbursts that he has uh, where he needs uh, to throw shit off because he's mad. But I never really felt that with him. I just wasn't too interested apart from the fight scenes into, in the story. Again, it's just that there's a weak story to this. There was a massive focus on the actual fights themselves, which I have to admit in the past were never my favorite parts of these films. Uh, other yeah. than maybe Rocky, like, 4 and Creed. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't even say the first Creed got me that excited for the fight, but maybe Rocky 4, the first Rocky, and then maybe the... Actually, you know what? My f other favourite fight would have been the the secret rematch between um, Apollo Creed and, and Rocky. That, that was just because I had a good emotional attachment to it, and that's mm -hmm. where the films have always been. It's always been about the the training and the the behind-the-scenes emotion than the actual fights themselves, where Creed 3 is the complete opposite. But, like, visually, these these fight scenes are wicked. Like, that opening shot, yeah. and I get the whole part that it was inspired by anime, but at the same time, you could also say that it was inspired by the Sherlock Holmes films with uh, Guy Ritchie, the slow-mo action sort of style, more than just anime as a general, but... That was a. Yeah. It made the films quite visually pleasing. Mm -hmm. That was the first fight at the start with that slow mo shot, and I was like, "Wow, that's pretty impressive." Yeah. But when we got to that final battle, uh, and I'll say battle because one of the rounds they just seemed to be all of a sudden in an empty stadium, and mm -hmm. Michael B. Jordan's pushed back to the ropes, and he's hitting a prison cell. There's a lot of visual cues yeah. going on in that scene, and I've basically said that like i wrote it down i was like this is my favorite fight out of all the rocky films like visually mm -hmm. it was great it was balanced there wasn't like a physical fighter that was <laughs> almost like a whole foot taller like in rocky Four, yeah. where rocky's like a short little man and <laughs> even like in huge. Cree too he, he's so much taller he's he so much, much bigger so much and i'm like there's yeah. no way they'd weigh in at the same anyway no. um <laughs> but yeah, like no. this is a heck of a fun fight and mm -hmm. there's still a little bit of emotion to the fight itself that makes it way more exciting. Uh, but the actual visual side of the fighting was top notch and I just had a, a fun time with that aspect. Yeah, I mean, they, they set it up uh, nicely from, from the start of what they're going to do. They're going to do like you know, hot, quick reaction shots of, like, uh, what's happening and uh, uh, where he wants to hit and then he executes. So that's, I think that's very anime other than, like, there's no inner monologue that happens there. Mm. Uh, but I think what, what uh, came out of those headlines of, like, it's anime-inspired is more that Michael B. Jordan likes, likes anime, anime and he watches <laughs> yeah. it a lot and then it ultimately um, makes its way into the series. And... I, I love that this, like, in the ninth installment in the series, we can go into a completely different direction when it comes to the portrayal of the fight scenes. Yeah. Ultimately, I think it always ends with, like, 10th round, and then both of them are just, like, not guarding anymore. They just, like, keep <laughs> trading blows uh, yeah. until it, it's, like, it, it's never ever was about realistic, realistic boxing. Uh, it becomes just, like, who can stand longer or who can get up more yeah i feel like you got two characters paired up here that um you know uh it's it's always about the perseverance and like how how their mental is so much stronger than the other guy and just uh, the body just what executes your your like mental toughness um and i think that that always is really interesting to see when it when it also is part of the story when he gets knocked down in the final fight uh he gets like a montage of the other times he's gotten up and that it's just like I don't know. It's a it's a it's a it's a bit over the top. It's a bit over the top. Not not really my my favorite thing there. 
but I, I also like the the visual side of like the, the prison cells coming in and like the blackout theater which i guess is great because they, i think they filmed it during COVID, so they, they couldn't have like a huge audience there uh, as a like a workaround for a lot of those things um but overall um i i've heard some people have pretty bad experiences at the theater because people were like really rowdy that, that's just anecdotal and like really specific uh which which is a bit of a bummer because i feel like with a great audience that enjoys this in like the fighting moments you you got some cheer worthy uh sequences and and some great stuff to to enjoy uh, so if you've been a fan of the franchise i feel like this is not a big letdown i feel like it's not one of the worst ones um if you like the fights but like you said the story the franchise has never really been that much about the actual fights fights it's just as much about like the montages and whatever uh of, of like the trading but yeah Lachlan uh do you have anything else about the end here um not not really I mean I pretty much said everything go? I who knows there was Rocky then there was the R Rocky 2 which was the rematch Rocky 3 was the random fight which uh I wouldn't say this is the random fight Rocky 4 which was the best one. So the next Creed should be the best one. And he's going to have to fight mm. someone. Rocky. <laughs> yeah, he has to fight Rocky. He kills him. <laughs> he actually fights the ghost Sorry. of his father, Apollo yeah. Creed. Oh, my God. Actually, Apollo Creed faked his death and he's come back. He fights Chad GPT. That's, that's the next fight. Yeah. <laughs> it's like all the fights uh, into one. Yeah, I mean, uh, I feel like we'll definitely get some sort of break from the series. Uh, I don't know how long for, though it feels like they are probably going to continue the story, especially if this does. Well, commercially, they will probably push for another film to come out, not... Uh, too far into the future, but Lachlan, where do you arrive at as a rating for Creed 3? Overall, I thought it was pretty good, other than the emotional standpoint, but as a fan of just visually pleasing things, I enjoyed the fights, and the very surface level story, I guess I've had enough emotional character growth for Adonis Creed from the previous two movies I literally watched the day before, and five minutes before <laughs> even starting the next film, uh, I guess I yeah. had his emotional roller coaster already there with me and not from watching it the previous couple years that these films have come out so i've mm. landed on quite a positive review score i could definitely see this going down after i re-watch it in mm. a few years time but i gave it three and <laughs> yeah. a half we watched a whole series whenever the next not one not doing i'm not doing that again <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> that sounds that sounds horrible. No, I wouldn't do that either. I agree there with the fighting sequences and the um, subpar story. Uh, I gave it a three out of five ultimately. Uh, so overall, still a positive rating, uh, and definitely not the low point of the franchise uh, by a long shot. I feel like uh, Creed has never stooped so low as some of the the Rocky films went. Um, so overall, still a Equality seal for for that whole like sequel uh, franchise with Creed. Uh, but that's that for Creed Free. Uh, let us know what you thought of it if you caught it, and um, let us know what your favorite Rocky film is of the whole franchise. Now, if you had to, you know, this is uh this is the un no, is this the main event? Definitely, Creed Free is the main event. What's your undercard to to go alongside it for this week's double feature? My double feature pick for Creed 3, after I've watched every single Rocky film, is the one other Rocky film that I forgot to mention, and that's mm. Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> <laughs> Dumb, I know, nice. but great double feature. <laughs> nice, yeah. I, I mean, after watching the, the Rocky films, I just want to break into a uh, song as well. I, I love those films. Uh, I, I, I love that film, and I love... Um, the live uh, stage adaptation of it as well. So <laughs> I'll second that. Uh, I'm picking a film that I haven't seen myself. I wanted to, but I, I didn't get to it. Uh, you've seen it before, right? Raging Bull uh, with um, of, 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 from Martin Scorsese. Uh, one of, of the classics I... when it comes to the boxing films. I want to catch up on it. Uh, I wanted to watch it. And then I said, I thought it was streaming on a Criterion channel. And apparently it's not anymore. So I couldn't find it. Uh, but I'll, I'll make sure to to watch it uh, for next week. 
Uh, speaking of next week, the new releases, we got two big films on the horizon. Uh, first up, the dinosaur time travel film with Adam Driver, 65, coming in at a runtime of like 73 minutes or something like that. I'll be uh, watching that later this week. Uh, so uh, keen for that. I've already seen Screen 6, uh, so to not break the embargo here still, uh, I'm excited to talk about the film. No quality given if it's good or bad or whatever. I'm just excited to talk about the franchise because I'm a huge fan of it. I guess uh, homework, uh, rewatch uh, Screen 5. It's definitely great to be reintroduced with the new uh, characters that um, you know we get in the series. Like with Rocky and Sylvester Stallone, no Neff Campbell returning for the series. Um, but I, I feel like uh, they, they, no, I can't say, I can't say, I can't say, and I can't say anything yet. I don't want to break the embargo. I don't want them to be mad at me. Uh, but uh, next week, we'll talk about Scream 6. And um, I think 65 will probably push to, to the week after. Uh, but until then, don't forget to, um, you got your final shot at filling out those prediction brackets for the Oscars. Tune into the live stream on March 12th or 13th, wherever you reside in the world. For me, it's like 2 a.m. on March 13th for the Oscars. I'll be there. I'll get drunk. I might even drink for Lachlan's wrong predictions. And that's it. Uh, leave a like on the video if you've enjoyed our conversation. Subscribe for more podcasts each week. And you can find Lachlan and myself all over the internet uh, from the links linked below in the description. So thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you next week. <laughs>